Amen. Last week we um, started on forgiveness. We spoke about forgiveness. Let me review it. I said today we'll look at um, case studies. And in our review, we said the issue of whether to forgive or not is not an option but it is a command from the Lord to forgive irrespective of the wrong. Most people don't seem to have a problem with that. I guess the problem is managing the crisis created by the wrong. And whether to pursue justice or ask for reparations, are they still part of forgiveness or not? We said the issue of restitution, relationship, and avoiding hurt has to be addressed. And we're looking at two aspects, a changed, remorseful, and a completely new entity, as shown in the life of the prodigal son, who initially was hasty, proud, riotous, and living, but is now patient, humble, responsible, and disciplined. That can be reabsorbed after forgiving. And the case of Onesimus, who stole from his master, ran away, was now saved and completely changed as recommended by Apostle Paul in Philemon chapter 1, verse 8 to 19. He too was reabsorbed. But they were reabsorbed on the basis of proof of change. Forgiveness is not reabsorption. Proof of change is what births reabsorption. And the second part is a non-change, non-repentant sinner. So in both cases, you must forgive. And in case number one, you can reabsorb with caution. In case number two, the person must, person must be kept at a distance. And in some cases, justice can be pursued. That is not unforgiveness. There's a difference between forgiveness and pursuing of justice. Portion of justice is not unforgiveness. It can be a proof of unforgiveness and it can be a proof of forgiveness. But it is not unforgiveness. And we saw an example in Numbers which we'll look at again. We have a duty after forgiving to protect ourselves from people. And um, I'm jumping as I review. We can always... Um, so one of the proofs of forgiveness is in a statement made by the father concerning the prodigal son. This statement, he said, this my son was lost and is found. We said this statement is not absorbing the son of wrong. Neither does it pretend like nothing happened. However, this statement does not destroy the personality of the son. The statement made by the elder brother, this thy son which wasted your money on prostitutes shows that there's a hurt, vindictive, derogative, which is a sign of unforgiveness. And we said, according to Luke, forgiveness is from the heart. And if from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks, one of the best ways to know whether you are forgiven or not is what you say. So what the father said of the prodigal son showed he had forgiven him by saying he was dead. Now he's alive, he was lost, now he's found. But the elder brother shows there is hurt and unforgiveness. He said, this useless boy that wasted all your money on prostitutes, that is derogatory. So one of the proofs you are forgiven is going to be found in your utterances, not in the seeking of justice. You have to understand that. Um... We say forgiveness is pardon concerning a wrong. It means to be gracious and to let go. Um, number two. 
Numbers. Numbers chapter 14. I read verse 20. Here, before here, God had spoken to Moses that the children of Israel have wronged him and they're going to be punished. In verse 13, Moses appealed to God for forgiveness. God said he will wipe them out. He will disinherit them. And he will wipe them out. And in verse 19, Moses said, Pardon, I beg you, the iniquity of these people according to the greatness of your mercy. And as you have forgiven these people from Egypt even up to now. And in verse 20, God said, I have pardoned. I have forgiven according to your word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord because these men which have seen my glory, my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these ten times, they did not hearken to my voice. They will not see the land. Now, he was going to wipe them out. He said, because I have forgiven them, I have pardoned them, I will not kill them, but... They will not inherit the land. So, you can't teach on forgiveness outside God. You can't be more forgiving than God. And if God says, after pardon, there's a punishment to follow, then there's nothing wrong in justice after forgiveness. Because we say, you are forgiven. Now, we're going to look at um, compensation and... Um, we look at, um, before we look at compensation, okay, there's some basic things we need to understand about forgiveness, which we'll come to later. But for time, let's look at compensation. We'll look at, um, sorry, excuse me. Okay. We look at um, restitution and we look at reparations and forgiveness. We look at compensation, restitution, and forgiveness. Compensation is money awarded. When I read this, then I give you a few case studies to look at. Is money awarded to someone in recognition of loss, suffering, or injury? It is also money paid for a service. I remember I watched a documentary on people who are abused by Catholic priests in Australia. And in fact, a bishop was sentenced to prison. A Catholic bishop was sentenced to prison in Australia for abuse of um, children. So one of the men that was abused when he was a child, he was given monetary compensation of $350,000. When I watched his interview, he said, I am still hurt. I still don't have peace. I have been settled monetarily. I've been told to forgive, and I have forgiven. But he is still not okay. Why? Because reparations and restitution comes from God. You can forgive, but it's better you leave those to God. Now, what is um, restoration? Restoration is to give back something lost or to repair a damaged thing and bring it back. So if you say, oh, this is my thing. I need it to be restored to brand new. So they will repair it. They will refurbish it. Then they return it like new. And when we look at cases of like rape, I don't know how you want to repair and, re and renew and return to new. 
Only God can do that. So, when you say restoration, the only thing man can do is compensation after forgiveness, which does not heal. However, reparation, what's reparation? It's an action of making amends for a wrong that has been committed, providing payments or other assistance for the wrong, giving back satisfaction for a wrong. So, if a person has been wronged, then when they say they give you reparation, meaning they do what will be satisfactory for you concerning the wrong. Let me give you an example. Genesis 41. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. They lied, deceived. Then in slavery, Potiphar's wife lied. He went to prison. Now, how do you address that wrong? Men, you're supposed to calculate prison. Okay, you're supposed to be earning if you're with your father. I don't know how you want to calculate it. However, when God gave him reparation, they gave him reparation as two sons. He called the first one Manasseh. I don't know what he saw in those boys. He said, this is Manasseh, for God has made me to forget the toil in my father's house. Compensation can't do that. Now, I don't know what that boy looked like. I don't know. Maybe he was so handsome. Maybe he was so caring. You know, there are children like that. When the husband is misbehaving, the child will just come and say, Mommy, oh, should I do this for you? What about this? Don't worry, Mommy, let go and work. I'm ready to work. I'll make money so that you can take the oranges you like. You know what that does to your soul? It just suits you. Okay. Money can buy such things. You look at the child, you struggle, and you see A's in a condition that is unconducive for learning. You say, thank you, Jesus. You feel compensated for the state you are in. Only God can do that. Only God. So it's a repayment to right wrong. While compensation is a monetary value, to appease wrong. Did you hear me? Compensation appeases wrong with money. Reparation addresses wrong. And only God can do that. Now, with that in mind, let's look at a few case studies that I've been asked to look at and address. We're looking at a case of murder of a father or a child, maybe by a maid, that is unremorseful, unrepentant, and you still have to forgive. What do you do? I said it's interactive today. You can ask questions. You can make Suggestions. Like we said, the question of forgiveness is not contestable. You still have to forgive. A woman had a daughter raped by a teacher in school. The father went in anger to fight the teacher. While fighting the teacher, he slumped and died. So the woman has lost, two, lost her husband and her daughter raped. What should she do? She still has to forgive. She still has to what? Forgive. But that man must go to jail. Why? It's safer for the society for him to go to jail. It's not lack of forgiveness to seek redress in court. But what monetary value can address that wrong? You leave that to God for reparation. And so what is needed there is justice. Okay? Am I together? Yes, you sound quiet. You appear quiet, and I need to be sure that we're on the same page you are following. A case of a neighbor who rapes a girl and denies it is still the same as the former, but was proven 
through police investigation and then starts pleading. First denied it. Vowed and swore, never did it. Told the girl a lie, because she's a bitch, sleeps around with men, now trying to pin one thing on me. But when it was proven, he now started saying, I'm sorry. How do you handle that? You still have to forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you're headed to hell too. You must first forgive. Do you let such a man go free? No. What do you do to him? Take him to the court of law. And guess what? Let him go to prison. It makes the society safer. That is not on forgiveness. How do you handle betrayal of information to a close friend who now went to tell your husband and eventually broke the marriage? And the marriage is over and she's now enjoying her marriage. What do you do? <laughs> eh? <laughs> you still have to what? Forgive. You must forgive. Forgiveness, truly, I don't believe is the problem. Managing the after effect, which needs wisdom, is always the issue. Do I pursue justice? Do I claim uh, compensation? Do I let go of compensation? In monetary terms, in monetary terms, let's give an example. Um, you gave money to a person to keep and they spend your money without telling you. When you need the money back, they were not able to pay. The person is nice, hardworking, can even be a blessing in other areas of your life, but has a weak financial discipline. So what do you do? The person says, I'm sorry. The person kneels and asks for forgiveness. How do you handle that? First, you must what? Forgive. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. I, I want to be sure I'm communicating. Yes, sir. So now the person has spent your money. It's quite a huge amount of money. The person kneels and is crying. Say, I'm sorry. Had some emergency, blah, blah, blah. Had to spend the money. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I don't have any money. I don't have the means to pay. I don't have the money now. Say, salary in it. The person is generally nice, but has a weak financial... Of course, you must admit you two at fault for keeping money with somebody that has no financial discipline. That's the first error from your end. All right? But even as at that, what do you do after forgiving? Do you tell her to take the money away? Or do you work out a repayment plan that is appreciably not that convenient, but... Affordable and realistic. Here, you get a compensation. All right, how much? The money is a million. How much do you have? I only have 10,000. Okay. How much do you earn? 100,000. How much can you pay every month? Not go with the money. No. So in finances, there is compensation which is okay and in order. However, in non-financial matters, you have to leave the reparation to God. God said, I have pardon, but this is what you must do. When David numbered Israel and wronged God, and he went to God, the first two days, um, the first two days, uh, first day, 70,000 people died the first day. And he went to God in prayer and said, Lord, have mercy. I'm sorry. He still had to give to God something that cost him to appease and address the situation. Am I communicating? So if it's money you can afford to let go, then you let go. If it's business money that you are accountable for, which you must still pay, and it would take undue stress on you, then she shares in the burden. It is not unforgiveness. And of course, that scenario ends with you still interacting and having a relationship with that person without monetary 
transactions involved. That means from that moment onward, we can sit down and eat. We can laugh and drink. But count dimes. That person won't get. You won't commit such a gain. All right? The husband has an affair with a neighbor or a maid and gets her pregnant. And the maid is someone very saucy, very rude, and grossly disrespectful. What do you do? And she's pregnant for him. These are case scenarios that has happened. That, you know, I didn't plan this. It was a discussion in the children's church which they asked me to help do a write-up on. While doing the write-up, it dawned on me that adults need it more than children. Because children forgive more than adults. Right? And it's adults that are having issues more than the children. So it dawned on me, we have to look at it. And then they were giving me cases that were asked. This situation happened. And what do we do? So what does the woman do? Remember, it was Sarah that brought Hagar, not Abraham, to Abraham. And he got her pregnant. And she chased Hagar and her son out of the house. And God seconded it. Say, I am with Sarah in this case. Forgiveness is not stupidity. Forgiveness is not foolishness. Let me repeat. Abraham did not stray to go and have an affair. Sarah, I will not answer this question. This is the only way I will answer it and I'm going to close. Sarah is the one that went to bring Hagar. Come and sleep with her so I can have children by her. After that, the woman did no wrong. Sarah said she can't live in this house with us. She must go with her son. And God said, I second with Sarah and with her on this matter. I will answer, that's how I'm going to answer this one. Then you interpret it your own way. Am I communicating? Forgiveness is not stupidity. No, it's not. Yet, you must forgive. How many times a day? 70 times 7 in a day. I can't go further because if I've spoken the very mild one and you are like this and there are heavier ones I'm to go to, what will happen? No, I can't go further. I can't go further. You're too quiet for my liking. You are too... You're too... <laughs> say after me, say, every man Every woman, every woman that has wronged me in this life, both the ones I remember and the ones I don't remember, this very day, 21st of May, 2023, I release you from the depth of my heart. I forgive from the depth of my heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, everyone I have forgiven that has wronged me in this life, do not take account of it with them anymore. I have blotted it out and any area that I have suffered wrong or suffered hurt. The God of restitution that restores years, that turns shame to honor, restore to me and reparate to me any damage, any hurt from such occasions in the mighty name of Jesus. Where it is appropriate to seek justice without bitterness, 
Father, I pursue it for peace sake in the name of Jesus. Amen. Assignment number two. Every person that has wronged you, that you are still hurt, you will take this week one hour. You can spread it 10, 10 minutes. You can spread it 15, 15 minutes. You can spread it five, five minutes as you can afford the time. Mention their name and ask God to bless them. Ask God to prosper them. Ask God to lift them up. Ask God to blot out the memory of what they did to you. Mention their name and be praying for them. Praying for them. Praying for them as if they have done you good. As if they've done you such a good that you can't repay again. That's the way you are to pray for them. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Are we together? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Finally, if it is a father, that's why we've not even gone to incest and the other ones. If it's especially a father or a mother that's wronged you after all that, of course, you still avoid the one with incest. And you must still honor him. He's the father. It's a honor thy father and thy mother. It has no condition. It has no condition for whether they are good or bad. You must honor them, but you can avoid them. You send them a token, a gift, a recharge card. Maybe you charge their line. Send to their account a small amount, a blessing, and transmit to them. Preferably in the next one month. And God will help you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remember, if you don't forgive, God will not forgive you. And if God does not forgive that person, he's a candidate of hellfire. That won't be your portion. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We'll take one prayer point. You can call it restitution. I don't know how Manasseh was to that man. And then that throne of Egypt. Who will compensate you with the throne? Because your brothers betrayed you. <laughs> no, no, no. That's nobody's business. You guys saw that with your brothers. The best they do is to hug you. Abby? Uh -huh. Kai, what compensation? What reparation? Let God reparate. Let it restitute. Let him restore. And that's the only prayer point we'll pray. As we close, that God Almighty should give you a Manasseh blessing Amen. that will make you, listen, they don't wipe out memory of hurts from people. Did you hear me? God doesn't do it. If someone suffers a prison experience and it was unjust, God won't come and say, Take that time, wipe the memory. I said, don't remember. No, 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 no. He's going to do something in your life. Manson Mandela was in prison for 27 years. But those four years as president of South Africa fetched it a name that I don't know how he can end that name in 27 years of hard work. I don't know. I don't know how he can get such a name. Up till now. Say after me, say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Give me a Manasseh blessing. For every wrong I have suffered, for every shame, for every reproach I have gone through in the name of Jesus, for which cause I have forgiven. Now, Lord, restitute, reparate, and give me my Manasseh blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me hear you pray. Mandolo Zubrada Katande Leke Zibre de Ke Katuya Makazandi. Orobondo Loboko Zek Re de Ketete. Ebrando Loboko Zandele Bakataya Mandi. Orobondo Loboko Zendi. Ebrendele Kataya Mango do Zumni. A grado, grado. Mengre de Mosunde. E Kalamande Leboko Zodo. Ekrede ke krede to 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 to. O raba baba 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 baba. O robo bo 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 bo. 
Orobondo loboko zende. E gredemo tu zakande lekete. E graduza. E graduza. E graduze. E grodomo kuza katani kachaka chaka toko. Orobondo loboko ze. E gredu sakata chaka tunde. Nangelebo zunde lekete. O grodomo ko zakata yamande. Ele buku shuku chaka chaka li kachoko lomoko ze. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. As I go to my seat, I'll just chip in something in the case of the betrayal, where you gave a confidential information to a friend, she went and told your husband, and that cost the person's marriage, and she now is even married to the man. Oh, yes. And they're having a nice time. She just had a baby. <laughs> and the man has left you. What do you do? Every, first, of course, you must forgive. Every opportunity you have to speak good of that woman, speak good. Did you hear me? Okay, she's totally your husband, so you don't call her a husband snatcher. But if she's a good cook, say, what do you think of me? Oh, she cooks very well. Don't lie. If she's hardworking, ouch, that woman is hardworking. But she's a whore. Don't join them to say that. Don't. Don't. Otherwise, God won't step in. He won't step in. She, that woman is ras. And you know she's ras. What do you do? Keep quiet. Hmm. That's the way to handle that. After forgiven. Then God will step in. Did you hear me? But if John and ras, hmm, God will keep a distance. You'll be shocked. They say she's doing second name ceremony. <laughs> Then you now hear that her husband just bought her a brand new Benz Jeep. And you know that's supposed to be your car. And you are probably driving a Passat. <laughs> you know that would make them more angry. Then you are praying for her to die. Then you hear she just came back from abroad. And she's looking very fresh. <laughs> you know that's generally what happens. When you are praying they should die, they are looking better. Or you don't notice. For what she has done, she will die, die, die. They say, oh, she just came back from U.S. yesterday. My goodness, she looks fresh. That's what you hear, right? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. So what do you do? Speak well of her. If you can, pray for her. Bless her. Actually, it's a bit difficult to do, but it's possible. That's the solution. Mm. We can't look at the rest because even you see how quiet you are. All the women are quiet. <laughs> the men are the ones looking at eh? The women are. Mm. It is well. Praise God. 